Welcome back YouTube, this is In-Depth Tech Reviews and in today's video I will be reviewing the stock Android Pie on Google's own hardware, the Pixel 3 XL I have here. And for me, this is the smartest operating system I have ever used on a mobile phone. And the reason for that is the integration of Google services across the whole operating system. Starting from Google Search, Google Assistant, Google Lens, Voice Recognition, Text Recognition and many more. Which makes using this phone really practical and useful. So let's check that out. Let's start with the new navigation that rely mainly on swiping where you have this little home button that you can swipe up to access your background apps, swipe up again to access your app drawer, or slide to the right to swap between all of your apps or flick right to swap between the two most recent apps. To close an app, swipe up the app card or tap clear all at the far left to close all of them at once. So as you saw, the Android Pie no longer has the three navigation buttons that we used to have in the previous versions of Android. However, we only have the home button at the bottom of the screen. But the back button is still there, but it's hidden and only appears anywhere else other than the home screen. And you can see it right there. Also, you may notice that you have the app background app preview in, is now in full screen and you can scroll through them horizontally. However, we used to have them stacked on top of each other in the previous versions and you can scroll through them vertically and i see that as an improvement in how it looks because i now can see the full screen of the application and instead of only seeing part of it and my favorite here is, is flicking between the two most recent apps in some situation i will be chatting with someone and also watching a youtube video so i like to jump back and forth between the two apps to get everything done at the same time and that makes it easier for me Google done a great job in Gboard when it comes to how useful it is. There are a lot to like about this keyboard starting with glide typing and how smooth it is compared to other keyboards that support the feature. So if you are into it, I recommend giving this one a try. Next is Google search. So if you tap this search icon, you will be able to search for places, articles, links, or possibly anything you would search for in Google right within the keyboard and share it with the person you are chatting with, which means it's not just a shortcut that takes you to Google page, but it feels like a mini Google search embedded in the keyboard that saves you from jumping between apps. It also recognizes the words you are typing and suggests some cool stickers and GIFs relevant to your words that you can share in your conversation. And if you are sick of typing, you can tap this microphone icon where you can use your voice instead of your hands and it's a pretty accurate. Finally, Google Translate is also available here. It works pretty much the same way as you would expect and it gives you a real-time translation for your words. Even the keyboard is taking advantage of Google services like Google Search, Google Translate, and voice recognition, which makes your typing experience way better. The Gboard is not exclusive for Pixel hardware or Google's hardware. It's available for any smartphone. You can download it for iOS and Android, totally free of a charge, and get your hands on all of these features. The next big thing is Google Lens, which provides loads of useful features. It used to be a separate app before, but now you can access it from your camera. The first thing I will show you here is the text recognition. Even with my bad handwriting, it managed to recognize it 100% accurate and allowed me to copy my text wherever I want. It also recognizes phone numbers or email addresses from business cards and takes you directly to the default app to start taking your action. And if you want even more, you can tap the small lens icon beside the recognized text and it will show you the place details or you can create the details as a contact. This is also one of the apps that takes advantage of Google services where you can tap the microphone icon and not just ask for the caller's name, but you can dictate the actual number, which I use while driving or if I'm taking a phone number of someone, I ask him to say the number to the phone. You also have the ability to search for numbers beyond your contact list where it allows you to search for numbers of the nearby places. So I search it for McDonald's number in the phone app instead of getting it from Google first and then copy it into the dialer, which is similar to the keyboard search we talked about earlier. Multitasking is way better on Android Pie because now you can interact with the background app preview and the copy a text out of it. Even if the app you are using does not allow you to copy its text, it will work for you. 
So in this example, I will copy the name of the Pixel 3 XL case and look for a review on YouTube. Then I swipe up and tap on the app icon in the background apps preview. And that's when split screen comes into play. It's already available for a while on Android, so I'm not sure why it's not available on iPhone, especially with a big screen phone like the iPhone XS Max, which is a shame because it makes multitasking really fun. Now you can take a screenshot by holding down the power button instead of volume up and power button, which is easier. And as you can see, how seamless is the multitasking experience on Android. And that's one of the things that makes Android really shine. Let me show you a nice trick here called the screen pinning. What it does, it locks the phone on a certain app and to get out of it, you need to hold down the home and the back button together and it will take you to the lock screen to use your fingerprint or your passcode. And it's really useful when you hand over your phone to someone that you don't want him to mess around with your phone. However, it's not active by default and you can activate it under settings, security and location. If you are using your phone while laying on bed or a couch and don't want your phone to keep rotating the screen, you can just lock the rotation and you will have this little button so you can rotate it only when you need to. You can swipe fingerprint to get the notification shade, which is really useful for big phones, as getting it with one hand will be a risk of dropping your phone. Google released a set of live wallpapers that are exclusive to Pixel devices and as last year with the release of the Pixel 2, you have this living universe category where some objects on the display move like the flying birds in this one. But what's new this year with the release of the Pixel 3, some wallpapers change based on the time, where they turn to dark at night and bright in the morning and there are quite a few of them. If you move to Come Alive category, you will see other wallpapers change when tilting the phone in all sides, which is not new to Pixel users of last year. But what's new under Come Alive category is some wallpapers interact to the sound. So when you play music, the wallpaper will start moving. So let me show you by playing some music here. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching. So please share your thoughts with me in the comments. I will be happy to go through all of them. And please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for more videos.